creating charts in WordPress using WP data tables. Charts are a very important feature of WP data tables because it's very convenient to uh, display, to visualize the data using charts. It's, it will never be uh, same visibility with tables and charts because charts uh, always allows to create a diagram that any user will understand after a couple of seconds and when you're looking at the table you need to look through really carefully to understand the meaning of each row so we introduced a very uh, user-friendly as we understand it way of creating charts in, in WordPress uh, WP data tables are used as the data source and then you can create as many charts as you want linked to one WP data table. You can paste all of these charts to a single page or to multiple pages. Uh, we introduced two rendering engines, engines for charts and we plan to add more. Also, uh, we introduced such a feature as following table filtering, which will be very convenient for uh, adjusting the visualization of the of the table data so we will show everything in detail step by step this video tutorial covers uh, creating charts using a data uh, using a wizard so uh, same as for tables there are basically two pages related to charts creation and charts editing first one is the table that I uh, the page that I look at right now it's called WP Data Tables Charts or short version, version WP Data Charts. You can open it if you open uh, your WordPress admin dashboard and go to WP Data Tables, WP Data Tables Charts. Basically, it's a browse page which shows all the charts that were previously created. So you can easily, easily pick one of them <coughs> and re-edit it. And another one is Create Chart Wizard. And that's the one that we are going to study now. Basically, it's similar to a table constructor. It's a step-by-step -step creation wizard where each step isn't overloaded with data. And I guess it's very easy for users to understand which every step, uh, what every step does. And it always shows only the necessary information. Uh, also, it has these breadcrumbs in the upper part. So you see there are six main steps, uh, actually even five because the last one only shows the short code. So first one is giving charity title and choosing a type and an engine. Next one is providing a data source, which means choosing a WP data table, which will be used. Third one is picking a data range, then defining some formatting, then preview. And if everything is fine, we can save the chart and publish it to the front end. So let's go through all the steps in this uh, simple demo. Uh, let's say video demo for chart wizard. The name is important because as you saw maybe uh, on the browse page when it gets crowded, when there are many charts, uh, a nice unique name will help you to find your charts later. The chart render engine uh, for now, there are two chart rendering engines, Google Charts and High Charts. Main thing that I, I need to mention here is that High Charts isn't free for commercial use as all the other uh, elements of uh, WP data tables. We only integrated support and we purchased a license ourselves for our, for our uh, site. If your site isn't, it doesn't have a commercial commercial purpose you can use the creative commons license to use high charts but if uh, it's a commercial site then please open highcharts.com and go ahead and find a license that's appropriate for you it's they are not very expensive but the charts are really nice maybe you can also use them outside of wp data tables someday uh, let's take the stacked bar chart for example so when you see when you pick a chart engine you will get a number of thumbs and all these thumbs represent uh, different chart types supported by 
WP data tables. It's very convenient. You can see right away how the render chart will look. And you can see even by thumbnails that high charts have more sophisticated outlook. And that's why we decided to support them. Let's use the stacked bar chart and click next. So first step is done. We define the chart name and pick the chart rendering engine. So let's go, let's go on. Next thing to do is to pick a data source. A data source, basically it's a WP data table that you previously need to create uh, and that contains the data for the chart. We will use a table that is called fruit consumption table. You can see it uh, in our landing page. Basically it is a small table with names. So uh, it's still loading. Columns are apples, oranges and bananas. And the rows are uh, names and values uh, of amounts of fruit eaten. So, for example, John ate three apples, seven oranges, two bananas, Paul ate six apples, two oranges, three bananas, etc. Uh, it's a small table, yet nice to visualize uh, the charts. That's it with the second step. We have picked a data source. Next step is to pick a column range and row range and probably turn on the table uh, following tab table filtering. So this step is picking the, the uh, date range, sorry, data range. Uh, you have these two blocks here. This one represent the columns that exist in the data source. The right one represents the columns that are already added to the chart. Also, it has some hints. So for example, for the chart type that we have chosen, we need to define at least uh, two columns. Uh, we can add all, add one by one, so we can pick the columns and add them. We can remove all, so we can select all, select none. So we try to add these handy, uh, small but handy features, which would make work with this feature uh, really pleasant and easy. So. We want to use the name as the horizontal axis, apples, oranges and bananas uh, as, as the series data. So to reorder them, we can just click uh, drag and drop. So for example, if we want bananas to be the first, we can draw, drag it to the top, etc. We can then remove them or add them back. Uh, if we, for example, add more than one string column, it will warn us that only one string column is allowed for the horizontal axis label and etc. Next thing is not mandatory and in most of the cases you will not use it. So uh, this uh, section allows to pick a range of rows that will be used in the chart. By default, it's all rows and usually it will be all rows, but also you can choose to choose to pick a range then this button appears range picker and when you trigger it uh, when you click the button you can see the table where you can select uh, the range actually both of rows and uh, columns for example in an excel like manner so you can click on the beginning of uh, the range and then drag and drop to to the end also, you can use these checkboxes to select only some parts. Uh, so that's how it works. And I will cancel. I, I would like in our demo to use all the rows. By the way, if you pick a range, let's pick a range. For example, only these. You can see that the selection of the columns gets overridden. It removed the columns there back there. Also, it shows how many rows did we pick. I will put it back to all rows and put the uh, put these back here and name will be the first one because it's horizontal. Uh, follow table filtering enables the following uh, of table filtering for this chart. 
We have a small separate video tutorial on this feature, so I will not uh, enable it right now. Just move on. Next step is the formatting. It has uh, a few options. First one is whether we would like to show the chart title uh, in the chart block rendered on the page. I think we don't need it. Then we need to define the chart width and height. By default, it's equal to 400. Let's make it larger so we could see it in the preview. Then we can define, <coughs> redefine the labels for series. Uh, if we want, of course. And we can redefine the colors. So let's pick some colors to show that it works. And then we can redefine the uh, labels for axis. Uh, the horizontal axis and vertical axis. It's pre-filling everything from the table but it's allowed to redefine everything because we try to keep it very customizable and flexible. Uh, and here you can enable or disable the grid and enable or disable the legend. So I will turn off the grid and keep the legend. Once we've done that we can click at next and immediately see how the chart will look. So you see there is no grid, there is no title, uh, it uses the colors that we defined and it has the legend down here, so here you can toggle the uh, different series and if you go back and show the grid and go again here, you can see that the grid appears. Once we are satisfied, you can enable chart title once we are satisfied, we can click Next. Uh, okay, now it also has the title. And click Next again, and it generates the chart and produces the short code, which we can then copy and paste on the page. But also, similar as for, as for the tables, we can just open or create any page. Say the chart video demo. Then we can place, here uh, is our chart. We can place the cursor where we want the chart to be and find this button here, insert WP data chart. So we click it, we have this drop down, and in this drop down we just need to locate the chart that we just created, which is apparently the last one. Click OK, and then publish. And once the page is published, we just need to click the view page to see how it looks. So here is our chart. We can play around it. It's very nice looking. I love how high charts are rendered. Uh, and basically that's it. It's very, very extremely easy, I'd say. Uh, I hope you found it useful and see you next tutorials. WP Data Tables, the easiest way to render interactive editable tables on your WordPress site. Purchase WP Data Tables exclusively on Code Canyon.